morning. As we prepare to celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, our parish family extends a prayerful welcome to visitors from throughout our diocese to their cathedral church and to all who are gathered with us as our sisters and brothers in the Lord. Please join in singing the processional hymn, In This Place Your Word Is Planted, which can be found in your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Your sisters and brothers in Christ, as we prepare to celebrate together these sacred mysteries, let us do so with hearts contrite and humble, seeking God's pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life.
us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request, so God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you, will come no one equal to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, 
We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. One of my greatest joys in life is being a grandfather. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm a permanent deacon and I am allowed and privileged to have a wife and children, and now they have children. And I love being called Papa. I just do. And I love spoiling the grandkids and having fun with them. And a few years ago, about this same time of year, I was watching our grandchildren, who were at that time 12, 5, and 3. And it was a hot summer day and I decided to do something fun. So I went down into the basement and I had come across a little jar and it was filled with decorative glass beads. You know, you can buy them at different stores and people fill jars up with them and stuff. They're pretty. And I took those upstairs and I found an old jewelry box and I dumped the beads into the jewelry box so it kind of looked like a chest. And I told our 12-year-old at the time, uh, we're going to bury treasure. 
And he said, oh, let me draw the map. Please, let me draw the map. And I said, okay, and we'll send out the two little ones to try and find the treasure. So we went in the backyard and we buried it. And the 12-year-old drew up the map. And sure enough, we sent the two younger ones out. And they were all over the place, from one end of the yard to the other and back and forth. And then finally, they found the treasure. You see, they were on a quest, a quest for buried treasure. I even taught them how to say, arg. It's good. You need to say it once in a while just to get it out. But yeah, they were on a quest, and they found the treasure. They dug it up, and when they opened up the box, their faces lit up with awe and wonder. Because to them, those beads were rubies, were diamonds, were emeralds, was a beautiful treasure so valuable they couldn't even believe it. And I tell you this story because today's readings deal with treasure. They deal with pearls and wisdom and what we consider valuable. So let's dive in right now and see what treasures we can find in the scriptures. In our first reading, we have a very young King Solomon, and he's worried about ruling over the people. He has a vast empire with many nations a part of it, and he's not sure how to act. So he prays, and God appears to him in a dream and tells him to ask anything he wants, and God will give it to him. It's interesting. Many of us might ask for good health, especially during this time of virus and all the other stuff going on. Uh, some of us might ask for riches to help get out of debt, some, some money. Some might ask for a long, happy life. All of these are good things. But Solomon didn't ask for those. Instead, he asks for an understanding heart, to understand what is right. And we too need an understanding heart. We need to listen, to be compassionate, to care for others. I know in my own life, there have been times when I have been what I like to call myself a judgmental joker because I would have people would come to me for advice or with a problem or something and before they even got it out of their mouths I already had formed my answer I already had my advice in my head I was ready to go you see I had a need to be right to be right and instead I wasn't listening they had a need for someone just to listen. So I needed to transform my own heart to a heart of understanding, one of caring. And it's still a work in progress, but we're getting there. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, um, some time ago when uh, she was giving interviews to different reporters, they were all lined up asking her different questions and there was a break in the action. And she picked up a small baby. And one of the reporters said, hey, mother, can I ask you a question? And off the record. And she said, sure, fine. And he said, you know, that child that you're holding there, his parents are from the evil regime. They hate Christians. They will probably grow up to persecute the church, and they may even act out with violence. What do you think of that? And she looked down and then looked around and then looked back at the reporter. And she said, all I see is a hungry baby. You see, she had eyes of understanding. And that's true wisdom. Sometimes we project things so far in the future or we drag things with us from the past and we can't let go. We can't be in the present moment. We're always thinking about what's going to happen or what did happen. We need eyes of understanding, true wisdom. St. Paul tells us that we are called to his purpose, predestined, conformed to the image of Christ. He wants us to remember who we are in Christ. Do you know that the God who rolled out the universe, created all the galaxies, all the stars, all the immense things that are in our universe, knew you from all eternity, knew you, you. He wants to remember, us to remember that he called you, 
You're not here by accident. You are his child. You're a child of the king. He knows who you are behind the masks, literally, and behind all the images we portray in, in public. And he called you to be here. In our gospel, there's a Hebrew word that our blessed Lord uses to teach with. It's, and I want to teach it to you. It's a word called mashal, mashal. So try saying that with me, mashal. Good, I can't hear you behind the masks, but it's all right. It's like Marshall, except no R, so mashal. It means parable. And it's a story meant to convey many meanings on deep levels. And our blessed Lord used this teaching technique, which is popular with rabbis, to teach. And here he speaks of a treasure in a field, of a pearl of great price. And if we look at just the pearl part of it, we can see how the mashal breaks down. On the first level, Jesus is the pearl. And we give all of ourselves to obtain him. We are asked to give up our own wills and our lives and to put on Christ. On the second level, we are the pearl. And Jesus is the one who came and gave all in order to pay the price for us. And then the third level, the pearl is the church. The church, which is the body of Christ, polished and protected over the centuries. Now, I don't know a lot about pearls, but I do know that they start off as a little grain of sand inside an oyster. It's an irritant to the oyster. But over time, it gets polished and becomes more and more beautiful. Sometimes there are imperfections in us too, and we need to get polished. And the polishing room is right over there, the sacrament of reconciliation. That's where we go to get our imperfections and our sins taken away. We need to be polished up again. You are a pearl of great price. You are valuable to God. He paid the price for you. So this week, let us think about what we value, where our treasures are. Let us develop an understanding heart. And finally, brothers and sisters, let us remove our imperfections. Remember who you are in Christ. You are a saint of God. You have been called by God. And you are precious in his sight. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, let us offer our prayers in the name of Jesus to God, our Heavenly Father. For Francis, our Pope, Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and all who serve the Church, that they may have hearts of wisdom and understanding to lead and to serve God's holy people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord. our prayer that our sisters and brothers who have studied or strayed from the faith may rediscover the merciful closeness of the Lord and the beauty of Christian life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord. our prayer. For all who lack shelter and suffer from exposure to the extreme summer heat, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For Lexi and Ted Olnick and all who were married this weekend, May they always be mindful of the covenant of love that they pledged in this sacrament and never fail in their fidelity to one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic and for a speedy recovery for those who are sick. And we remember the prayers written in our Book of Intentions and the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, our prayer. prayer. O Lord, let peace guide the course of world events, that your church may serve you in joy and security. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn of praise. This is a story full of love, which can be found in your bulletin. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. To those who have joined us live stream and for those who are gathered before the holy altar of the Lord, thank you for welcoming the gift of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom the Spirit brings into your hearts and minds and souls. Thank you for letting that Spirit in the freedom of your will that comes through God's mercy lead you to the fullness of truth and everlasting life that is Jesus the Christ. Thank you for your life that you share in the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.